Hello, welcome to another immigration art video. My name is Art Saratelli, and together with Mara Mial, the two of us, we are the partners here at Saratelli Mial PLLC. We run the immigration law firm, and we will answer any questions, any questions you have about any aspect of immigration law. So always feel free to send us an email. Email is your best bet. Unlike other places, we answer email fast, within a day, uh, the longest 48 hours. We try to stick to the 48-hour rule. You have a question, we'll have an answer, send us an email, and we'll go from there. Today's video has to do with the new requirement instituted by Donald Trump regarding interviews for not only family-based cases, but now interviews based on employment as well. The last time, the last time our government required anybody to go in for a employment-based green card interview was in 1992. 1992. Two, we determined as a government back then that it, it's insane. It is a huge waste of time to have people be interviewed about their job. You're going to have to talk about things that are arcane and Byzantine and, and, and pertain to compliance with the immigration regulations concerning when you can switch jobs, if you're still employed in the same job, what's your job title, um, if you're married and someone else in your family is getting a green card with you, uh, like your spouse or children, do they still meet all the requirements? So this isn't like a marriage case. Uh, it's more than that. It's evidence for rules that you're not going to be familiar with. So why drag the poor worker down to the immigration office when a lawyer and the worker together can answer any questions the government may have in writing? So since 1992, they have waived all interviews for job-based immigration instead asked and the lawyer and the client would answer any questions about the status of the employment, the details of the employment, any changes in job title, any changes in employer. All that stuff was asked in an RFE by mail and the lawyer and the client would answer by mail. There is no need it is such a waste of time to drag you down to immigration to answer questions and bring evidence. It's dumb. And as I've said, as I've said in other videos, dumb. I had a whole semester of that in my third year of law school. Other students, they, they took another elective. The other elective they took in law school was called stupid. These, these, these requirements are paranoia-based, and they're stupid. So bear with us. This is, this is an, an old requirement that was previously, in 1992, determined to be ridiculous, superfluous, unnecessary, and a big waste of time. Now it's being reinstituted by someone who's living in the past, to combat what? A perceived threat? Is someone going to be able to tell that you're a threat to national security just by looking at you? Do you feel any more secure because people through job-based green cards are getting interviewed before they get the green card? Do you feel better? Do you feel safer now?
So here's what you got to know. I'm going to show you a few screenshots of a memo posted through the American Immigration Lawyers Association. I'll show you a few screenshots and you'll see the kinds of stuff that they're going to be talking about with you in the interview. My advice, if you want a lawyer to go to the interview with you, give me a call. These first few interviews, until we figure out what they're really doing in there, might be a little tricky. They might be a little tricky. So here are some screenshots now. As you can see from the bullet point list, the evidence that the American Immigration Lawyers Association suggests bringing to the interview is a joke. Half of the stuff they're asking for is to educate the interviewer on what they should and need to have in the file and what they don't need to have. So there's things on the list like this. Why don't you bring a copy of the Visa Bulletin, which shows your green card category is current, to let the interviewer know that you are eligible and you should be granted the green card because your priority date is current. You've waited long enough. If the interviewer doesn't know that, bad news for you. What? What? You have to educate them on the law? Then the American Immigration Lawyers Association says, if you want to bring the alternative USCIS priority date chart that is used in conjunction with the visa bulletin, bring that too. Oh, great. You are a civilian and you got to be discussing the intricacies of priority date currency. When is the priority date current and why it is current in your case? Again, if the interviewer doesn't know that, what the heck is going on? Here's another thing that drives me crazy. You're supposed to bring in copies of the regulation to prove that there are certain pieces of evidence that they expect to see in a family case that they don't need to see in an employment-based case? Wait, what? Is it your job to tell the guy or the woman interviewer what they need need to be looking at in terms of evidence because they haven't done this since 1992? It's crazy for the burden to be put on you to bring in stuff like this. Now, you may think, well, it's the American Immigration Lawyers Association. They're telling the lawyer to bring this stuff in just in case. Well, if you go in there with no lawyer, you don't have any of this stuff. How are you going to be able to confront an ill-informed interviewer with information you don't even know you should have? It's an aggravation. Read that memo, and remember, the memo is written for the lawyer. The memo I posted, the memo I'm showing you, is for the lawyer. If you want a copy of the memo and you can't find it on my social media, email me. I'll send it to you. But the point here is until the government gets comfortable with this new idea of employment-based interviews, you might need a lawyer's help. They want you to bring in all the documentation that proves all the information that was hashed over in the PERM labor certification step at the Department of Labor and at the I-140 stage to show that you at the I-140 stage satisfied whatever the requirements were at the labor certification stage. If you're self-sponsored or if you have an exception where you don't need the labor certification stage, only God knows, only God knows what they're going to be talking to you about 
in that case, this whole thing is insane. In the memo, it's saying that you should probably bring proof that there are family relationships for everyone, for everyone trying to get the green card through the primary worker. So if the primary worker is married and, and spouse gets a green card, you better have the marriage license. If spouse and, and primary worker have children and the children are young enough to get the green card through the worker, you better have birth certificates. These kinds of things, again, can all be taken care of through the mail. Through the mail. These, these, these requirements are paranoia-based and they're stupid.